Great, thank you so much. Go ahead and start when you're ready. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for having us here today. Nicholas and I are mathematics and physics students at the University of Madrid, and we work on lens modeling at the LBNO. Um, today, we're going to be talking about two lensing systems and how we have modeled them. These two systems have been discovered by our team using the previous NERSC supercomputer, CORE. But before we get started, we'd like to thank our amazing collaborators. Especially, we'd like to mention three names from the LBL. Shaishan Huang, our mentor, David Schlegel, and Sol Permitter. Also, we would especially like to, to thank Peter Harrington, Rowling Thomas, Steve Farrell, Nestor Demure, and Andrew Naylor from the NERSC team. Their, their help has, be, has been key in, in, in the understanding of, our, of a part of the problem that we will present later. So uh, what is gravitational lensing? It was predicted by Einstein's general relativity. It occurs when the Earth, a foreground galaxy, and the background galaxy almost perfectly align. This happens for only one in 10,000 galaxies. So these are very rare phenomena. What actually happens is that the, the foreground galaxy, known as the lens, warps space-time to bend the, line, the light that is coming from the background galaxy, known as the source. Here at the Earth, we will see multiple images. In this simulation, you can see here uh, one image, one lens image at the top, and one, le one lens image at the bottom for a total of two images. Whereas in the systems that we're going to present today, we will see four images. Now, one of the scientific use cases for strong lensing is um, modeling the dark matter distribution around these galaxies. And as for the part of, uh, sorry, as for the computational side of the modeling, we use the GigaLens framework, which Nicholas is going to, to explain now. Yeah, so now let's introduce our problem. So using the observed image, we want to obtain a deeper understanding of the source uh, light profile and the lensing galaxy mass distribution. In terms of Bayesian statistics, it means we have an inference problem where we don't know the ground truth parameters describing our system. So to recover them, we can use a parametric model depending on the shape of the galaxy. And we'll also use GigaLens, which is a gradient informed GPU accelerated lens modeling framework, which was developed using NERSC resources. It consists of three steps. The first step is multi-start gradient descent using a few thousand initial particles to identify the maximum of our posterior. Once it has, it has been identified, we'll fit a surrogate Gaussian around this maximum using variational inference. We then have an estimate for the true covariance matrix, uh, which is necessary for sampling using Hamiltonian Monte Carlo. So one specific example of a lens system is the so-called Einstein cross. Here, um, the four images coming from the same source form a cross-like pattern with a high degree of symmetry. We can also see here the main lens labeled as L1 and a secondary lens. Also on the right, we show the spectral features for images A, V, C, and D, and they are identical, proving that they all come from the same source. Now, let's talk more about the model. To our knowledge, this is the first time a real gravitational lensing system has been modeled using GPUs, and the results are promising. It only took 55 seconds to run the entire pipeline on one A100 GPU on NERSC. The model consists of a main lens, whose light here looks weaker because just because we are using a different filter. And also this faint object L2 is the secondary lens and is treated as a perturbation. And despite this complexity, which involves fitting 31 parameters, is this model outperforms the speed of all your lensing codes by two orders of magnitude. Also, uh, the best feed recovers the ground image, the ground observed image uh, really well. Now, the top right corner, we demonstrate consistency between the chains obtained in sampling using Hamiltonian Monte Carlo. For the velocity dispersion, which gives information about how massive these lenses are, 
we have independent calculations. So first, using the small new information, we estimate the velocity to be around 379 kilometers per second. And due to the effects on spectrum because of stellar motion, we estimate it to be around 400 kilometers per second. So both results are independent and consistent. Now, for more complex models, we need more computational power. That is why, with the superb support from the NERSC team, we were able to uh, set up a Conda environment based on JAX that allowed all users to use four GPUs within the GigaLens framework. The, estimates to, the estimated improvement in the speed, the modeling time, is 3.5 times faster. Um, with this step forward, we were able to model the system that I'm going to introduce next. But first of all, I'd like to remark that this is a preliminary result, but it is close to being published. Now for this system, we had high resolution Hubble data. Um, however, uh, using four GPUs, we were able to model the, to model this system and handle not only its resolution, but, but the large size of the image. Here at the bottom, you can see the observed image and our best fit model at its right, um, reproduces very well the structure, the very detailed structure of the arc, as you can see here at the, at the residue. This, this detailed structure of the arc is coming ultimately from the source, as Nicholas explained. And uh, for that degree of detail, we needed to use a very complex model for the source, but it came at a computational price. Then in addition, we used uh, more sophisticated models for the lens, for the gravity of the lens as well as other light profiles, for example, for this little dot here at the right arc. This is because of the high resolution of the image. Now, despite the complexity of the system, the high number of parameters and the size of the image, this is the first time ever that anyone has performed a fully Bayesian model on Hubble data. We achieved around 50 minutes of modeling time, as well as a very, a very statistically robust results. You can see those here at the corner plot for the HMC of the lens parameters. To conclude, we demonstrated the speed and the capabilities of the of GigaLens by modeling a new Einstein cross. Our paper was highly recognized in, uh, for example, AAS Nova, LVNL Computers, Computing Sciences, and the European Southern Observatory. In fact, the image in the first slide was taken from the press release of the ESO. Then we successfully set up a Conda environment that worked on JAX that allowed us to use four GPUs to, to perform the first fully Bayesian model on high resolution Hubble data. Now, to give you a glimpse of, at what we are working now, we plan on expanding GigaLens to use, uh, to use multiple nodes of GPUs, each with four GPUs. This, of course, will enable us to model more complex systems in a shorter amount of time. Thank you for having listened to us. And if you have any questions, we're more than happy to answer them.